All right, graphing a graph of the form y equals a sine x or y equals a cosine x. These are great. These are the nice, simple ones, and it's a great place to start. So starting with y equals 3 sine x, um, I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 3 sine x minus 0 plus 0. So you can really see where those a, b, and c's are. So if you refer back to the previous page, we have all these formulas here, um, and then the general form of sine or cosine. And we're going to use all of those. All right, when we're graphing, it's easiest to think about the midline first. So I'm going to start with D here. D is equal to zero, and that means that the midline is at Y equals zero, which is the X axis. Is that Y equals zero? So there's my midline right there. After I plant, plot my midline, I'm going to go and look at my amplitude. My, oops. <laughs> my amplitude. So the A value here is 3, and that means that my amplitude is 3. So from my midline, I'm going to go up 3 units, and this is going to be my top. And I, I plot these lines. These lines don't really exist. Um, these dotted lines that I'm drawing, they do not exist, but they make a really useful guide for when we go to graph. So I like to draw them um, as I'm sketching. And maybe I'll do D in a different color, uh, this midline in a different color. Or no, I'll do this one in a different color. I'll do it in gray. All right, and then three units down from the midline, one, two, three. That is where I'm putting the bottom. So this is from here to here, the amplitude of three. And then from the midline to the bottom, amplitude is three. All right, so we have those plotted. Now we need to look at what, let's see, B. I think I mixed my colors up here from what I was in a previous video. It doesn't matter. Um, B, that's the value right in front of X. It's There's nothing, so it's just a 1. So if B is 1, we had said in the previous video, if B is 1, I did use different colors, um, then the period is 2 pi. It's just the same as regular sine and cosine. since I've mixed all these colors up, it doesn't really matter here. So C is equal to zero. That's that value right there. There's nothing being added or subtracted on the inside. And that just means there's no phase shift. Another way of looking at that is that the phase shift is zero. So we just need to figure out where the five points that we need to plot are. And we're looking at X values here. And the first X value that is your, your first key point x value is always the phase shift. So we start at zero. To figure out what the other points are, remember how we scroll on up, how we split this guy into four pieces? You just need to find out what a fourth of the period is, and then you just add a fourth, add a fourth, add a fourth, add a fourth, and you can find all of the rest of the key points. So I call that the quarter period, QP for quarter period. It's just the period divided by four. Our period was 2 pi, 2 pi divided by 4 simplifies to pi over 2. So we are going to add, maybe I'll just kind of make that red. We are going to add pi over 2 each time, so plus pi over 2. And then I have 0 plus pi over 2 is pi over 2. Add pi over 2 again, that's 2 pi over 2. You can simplify it if you want, or you can leave it. I kind of like leaving it because it keeps everything with the same denominator. Um, add it again, 3 pi over 2. Add it again, 4 pi over 2. So each of these times, I added pi over 2. Added pi over 2. Added pi over 2. Added pi over 2. I now have five points, five x values. So the first x value is 0, the phase shift. 
And then since I have a blank graph, I can really do whatever I want here. I'm going to say that this is pi over 2. So every two units is pi over 2. So this will be 2 pi over 2. This will be 3 pi over 2. And this will be 4 pi over 2, which, of course, you could write 2 pi or you could write pi um, for these guys here. Now, I'm going to draw in a little grid at first. And this isn't to keep. That was a really thick line. <laughs> this isn't for us to keep, but it's to give you an idea of what I'm looking at. So essentially, I have. I have this grid. And the only places I'm going to allow myself to point to plot points are either on the high point, the low point, or the midline. So these are the only possible places that we're going to plot points. And you can only plot one per x value. Those are all the places that we can plot points. just kind of keeping that in mind going into this. We need to know where to start. So we look at, is it sine or cosine? Um, it's sine, which means we start at the midline. So our first value, let's make it, let's make it a blue graph. Our, oops, that's too big, blue. Our first value is going to start at the midline. And then it's a question of, do we go up or down? And that's based on the A value. Is the A value positive or is the A value negative? In this case, A is positive. So we're going to go up first. And we're going up. So I like to think of it as kind of like ladder stepping. So like you ladder step up. You went over to your next important X value. You ladder stepped up. And now you're at the top, so go to your next va x value, ladder step down, next x value all the way to the bottom. Once you reach the bottom, ladder step upward. And there you go. And this pattern, it continues itself. So <laughs> over two, go over two units and up, hit the top, over two units down. You can continue this forever. But typically, when we're graphing these things, we're only graphing one period. So we just graph those five points. The domain of all of the sine and cosine functions, negative infinity to infinity. And then the range, just look for the bottom, look for the top. Um, look for the bottom, look for the top. And that gives you your range, because the range is your y values. Domain is x values, range is y values. So the smallest y value here is at negative 3. The highest one is at 3. Because those are values that the function actually takes on, you can get a y value of 3. They go in brackets. So it's the range is negative 3 to positive 3. So there's that one. All right. So let's look then down here at this guy. Um, again, easy for us to just start with. Maybe I'll just do these in black. Well. Let's start with writing this as y equals negative 5 halves cosine of x minus 0 plus 0. So the d value here is 0, which means the midline is at y equals 0. I'm just going to use all different types of colors on this. There we go. There's our midline. Our amplitude is determined by A. So A, the value out in front, is negative 5 halves, which means the amplitude is positive 5 halves, which, oh, did I do 1.5? OK, no, just kidding. I was trying to think in class if I did this incorrectly. No, I didn't. We just skipped this problem in class. You might be watching this because we didn't do this problem in class, unless you're watching this as my online students, in which case we don't have class together. I'm just rambling. This is 2.5. This is 2.5. So 2.5 is around here. That's our amplitude. 2.5 or 5 halves down here, negative 2.5. I'm going to draw my 
lines. Again, these lines aren't really here. I really should like erase these because that's what the graph is meant to look like. I like to put those lines in to guide us, but that's all they really are is for guiding. Okay. Our next thing we can look at is B for the, if there's any changes to period. So B is just one in this case. So the period is just two pi like regular. And C is equal to zero, which means there's no phase shift. Because there's no phase shift and the period is two pi, we're gonna end up with the same key points as we did in the previous problem. Zero, pi over two, I'll just write it as pi. Zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. Three pi over two and two pi. So here's zero. And again, you can put these, you can space these however you want. When it's on paper, two pi. This time we are looking at cosine. And cosine begins at either the top or bottom. Because our A value is negative, that means we start at bottom. So I'm starting at the bottom, going over to here, um, going up. So I'm at the bottom, so I go up, I go up. And once I reach the top, I go down, I go down. I have plotted one point at each of my important key points. And let's see. Boom. Again, you can continue this pattern. It's not hard to, to draw even more here. You could continue it here and here. And these lines I've drawn, they're not really real. So we can just, we can delete those and bam, that's what our graph looks like. All right, so in the next video, we are going to talk about vertical shifts. Um, so this one, we just talked about amplitude changes, which is like, uh, vertical stretching and compression in the next video, vertical shifts. I'll see you in that video. Bye.